Hey guys, welcome to my first YouTube video of 2018. In this episode, I'm going to show you what I do in each of my roles as a producer, editor, and shooter, aka Shredditor. Let's get after it. On this channel, we follow my dog Disney and I on his journey to his first AKC competition. At any point during the video, I may list resources or a website, so I'll be sure to link the show notes in the YouTube card or the description section below. studio and today I'm going to walk you through my workflow on how I use Adobe Premiere CC to make my YouTube videos. In my roles as the producer, the shooter, and the editor, I have to think through things a little bit from start to finish. It starts with a simple concept design. I pretty much just doodle everything or put it on my iPhone. I figure out, okay, what's the framing of the shots? What kind of lenses do I use? Right now I'm shooting on a Sony a7R 3 The best camera is the camera that you have right now, so use what you got. What I'm gonna do now is gonna jump into the computer and basically walk you through my editing workflow. The first thing I do is I go and I set up a project file. This is usually divided up with the name of the project. Usually I dated Dingle Days and whatever date I plan to publish it to YouTube. And then I usually create a few subfolders for footage, uh, for my renders, for uh, maybe some screen flow that I'll do to show my laptop and what I'm doing there. So it's all about staying organized. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna open up a Dingle Days episode that I've already created a project for in Premiere. Now I actually use a three drive workflow. So with that, I have the first drive, which is obviously my operating system. And two things you wanna do, since I'm only operating on a 2.2 gigahertz processor, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go over to Premiere Pro and I'm gonna go over to Preferences media cache and right now it's set to default to my operating system and what I want to do is keep all my cache files on an external hard drive. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to navigate over to my cache and choose that. And the same thing for my media cache database. These files are not very large but I'm going to also take those off of my operating system. And all it's basically saying is hey do I want to go ahead and move the existing cache files and I do, I'm just going to start from over, so I'm just going to delete those and press OK. Alright, so now my cache files are now stored on an external SSD. Now what I want to make sure for the specific project is that my scratch files are also on a separate SSD for my third drive. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over to File, Project Settings, Scratch Disk, and then I'm going to make sure that those are set to my other external hard drive. Okay, so now my scratch files are on an external hard drive, my cache files are on an external hard drive, and the only thing coming off of my computer laptop is my operating system helping to run Premiere. Premiere Pro is not maximized to use your graphics card as much as it should, so keeping the operating system free from being bogged down is one of the things that's going to help with your editing workflow. I'm editing on a 2.2 gigahertz laptop, circa 2014, 16 gigs of RAM. I'm using 4K files now, very large with the Sony a7R 3 so I use a proxy workflow. Once I have all my footage imported in Adobe Premiere, I go ahead and create a new sequence. I usually just create a new sequence from clips, sequence settings that I want to use for my export. So in this case, I'll be exporting this video in 4K. The first clip that I'll drag on to the timeline so I don't have to go up and make a new sequence is just drag a 4K clip onto my timeline and it'll create a sequence with the same resolution. I just dump all of my footage onto my timeline and go from there with the initial cuts. The biggest thing with the edit is for me to go through, keep the footage that I want, get rid of the footage that I don't want, and for all of my cuts with regards to audio, I make sure that I do a cross resolve in between all the cuts to keep the constant gain um, and sort of pe keep people from noticing that pop that happens when sometimes you uh, cut without actually doing an audio transition. And when the proxies are enabled, you can kind of see that little blue um, denoting that we're on the proxy file. And then when I toggle the proxy off, uh, I'm using the full res files. Now I use the proxies strictly for the editing portion. However, when it's time for me to color grade, I, I do not use the proxies because I want to use the full resolution files for that. For color grading, 
on 99.9% .9 of my videos, I'm just using Lumetri Color. But for some of my videos, I do export my footage via XML to DaVinci Resolve. I may do a video on that later and to color grade and use the functionality there. It's a very, very powerful tool. Once my color grade is complete, all my audio is synced, I am comfortable with the grade, I get ready to export my footage. Usually a ProRes 422 version, just in case I want to go back and pull that footage for a different purpose later. And then I'll also use one with the YouTube easily compressed footage to publish to the web. I store all those things on my external hard drive and I start the process all over again. So guys, this was a basic walkthrough of my editing workflow. Um, I'm always gathering new ideas for how to make things more efficient. If you guys have any suggestions for how I can make my workflow more efficient or some of the best practices that you're using in your own editing workflows, I would love to hear about them in the comments section below.